flipped learning and cognitive load theory. So what I'm going to do here is I've read two articles which I'll sort of go into a bit of detail about and I'll explain what the key findings of it were and I'll link that to flipped learning as a methodology and to my own practice within the umbrella of flipped learning. So it'll serve two purposes. It'll um, assist me to make a bit of a review of my own practice and it'll also offer you a little bit of academic backing to what you hopefully are doing with flipped learning. So the two articles we're going to be discussing. Firstly, I looked at optimising learning from examples using automated pedagogical agents, which was by Robert K. Atkinson. And then I also looked at learning from examples, instructional principles from the work examples research by Robert K. Atkinson, Sharon J. Derry, Alexander Renkel and Donald Werther. So looking firstly at Atkinson's article, first thing you need to know is that it was small scale, so 50 participants and that they were undergraduate students. The second thing, if you look at the images over there or over there, uh, that'll show the sort of the method. Uh, and so when it says text only, what, you, what the students are actually seeing is the picture here. And when it says voice only, they're seeing the, what they see here plus voice. And when it says animated plus voice, uh, you sort of see this image, which includes a little parrot type thing, which is the animated element or feature of the study. Obviously, it's worth noting that these aren't technologically brilliant, as this study came out in 2002. It's not exactly cutting edge technology that you can see here but the core elements are still very true. But also you must take them with a grain of salt as they are a very small scale, being only 50 participants. So for the near post test, text only was 5.88, for voice only 7.20, and for voice plus agent 8.36. So you can see quite a significant change of two points between text only and voice only, and then a, f a full point higher for voice plus Asian. And then for the far post test, you have 3.92 for text only, 4.32 for voice only, and 6.48 for voice plus agent. And these numbers show a significant jump for the voice plus agent. So that's suggesting that the retention is higher when you have an agent and a voice being combined. So as noted, the participants found it a lot less difficult to complete those with a text plus agent. And as it says here, the use of nonverbal cues such as gesture and eye contact definitely does support learning. And also gesture doesn't seem to add to the extraneous load. It doesn't seem to distract students or overcomplicate them or overwhelm them with information but rather it shows that it is actually supporting their learning. So just to reiterate the worked example, the point is that students are seeing the process of how to perform a task. And it's suggested here that without the gesture and the eye contact and sort of the animated agent pointing to where their eyes should be, was that without the agent and with voice only, they were simply just scanning the information, looking for the key, what the voice was relating to. So they had, they spent more time on the extraneous part, which was locating what was happening and how they were meant to be interpreting the information there. And then just as a little sidebar, they also noted that within their test, using a text to speech feature, computer generated, they found less success than with when they actually got a human person to record the same information. And this is something that they suggest should should or could be used in further research. So just applying this to flipped learning, if you gave a PowerPoint, printed it out and gave it to students, they would learn a certain amount. If you then recorded that as a screencast with voice only, then that would improve their learning by a point or two on the post test. And then, but if you also added an animated element, which in this case would probably be the face or the body or the upper, however much of a teacher explaining the concepts, then this improves significantly two or three points but then of course there's the issue of gesture so if you're simply a talking head in the corner of a video say or as i am here from a certain aspect up that's an improvement but there was a lot of comment on gesture within this study and so for that you probably want to be using something like a forward board or making some sort of actual annotations on the page or digitally inking as you go uh, because the non-verbal features uh, showed a significant improvement in this study so to sort of generalize from this study the more naturalistic and the more realistic uh, you make your content, the will actually have an actual impact on the learning that your students can achieve. And the note about te text to speech is significant in regards to dyslexic students and also audiobooks. So there are a lot of audiobooks you can find which are simply a text to speech version of stories or novels, uh, but this shows that at least it indicates that uh, having an actual human voice or an actor read them out is a much, much more achievable and understandable format for students, which seems to indicate the sort of videos on YouTube of teachers reading out a story to their class via a screencast is actually beneficial for their learning rather than simply reading it off the page themselves or alternatively using a speech to text format. So then from this article I jumped off into the article entitled Learning from Examples and the study of Musavi, Lowe and Sweller found similar to the study we just discussed that 
making something multimodal does actually increase the learning of the students. While it was only modest evidence as they found, as they noted it, um, they found that multimodal, including audio and visual, was superior to simply visual input. And the findings of this weren't score-based, but they found that they spent less time completing the test and this was true even when they controlled the duration of the test. So in essence, students do it quicker because it is inherently easier. So in 97, Jeng, Chandler and Sweller, in their article, The Role of Visual Indicators in Dual Input, found that adding electrical flashing to a document actually improved students' learning. And this was even in conditions where there was a great deal of information competing for students' attention. And again, this indicates because students are spending less time on the extraneous elements of the task, less time searching for what they need to find, and more time understanding and trying to input the key information that in this study was actually electronically flashing, which sounds quite distracting in and of itself, but they found it actually improved. And the scholar Catram Bone, through six separate studies, found that within your worked examples actually providing steps of what's going on and the steps that the students should replicate when they complete the task themselves had a significant impact and that it would actually pr improve their problem solving capability. So if you would like to read any of these articles for yourselves, the actual articles uh, full reference list will be in the description. So my main takeaway from this overall is that uh, text plus speech is good. So if you just have on the screen a PowerPoint and your explanation of it, that's better than simply reading it or getting students to read it themselves rather. Uh, but that adding in a face or an animated aspect will actually improve learning. Uh, but also the references to gesture and body language is something that I think my own videos could definitely improve upon and work upon. Uh, and to do that, I'll probably need to get something like a light board so that I can directly gesture towards the key information, underline aspects and those sort of things. I think the videos I made that were actual worked examples of language analysis were ideal in that rather than an animated actor of me talking directly to the camera, you could see my hand uh, actually annotating and making the notes that students would need to make on their own pieces of work. I think these videos, though rather low-tech and low-fi, probably serve as the best illustration of cognitive load theory in flipped learning that I've achieved this year. Mm -hmm.